Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here at the Lab Coats on Back Order, and it's time for this week's Pokemon TCG online match. Now, I know last week I mentioned that I was going to try to get a video set up with a, a local trainer of mine from my local league at Heroes Beacon. He wanted to show off a Knocked Owl deck using the High Flight, I believe the attack is called. It's basically an attack that does more damage based on the number of item cards both players have in hand. Unfortunately, this weekend we were not able to meet up to uh, record a match, so I actually threw something else together. And since I did report last week on the Break Evolution box that features Empoleon Break, Bohemian Break, and Knocked Owl Break, I thought, I'm going to actually show those Pokemon off in battle. So, with all that being said, we're going to check out the deck that I've assembled this week for the Pokemon TCG Live Online match featuring these three Break Evolutions. Let's check them out. So we're now going to take a look at the deck that I've assembled for this week's Pokemon TCG Live Online match. I've called it Promo Break. And the reason is it's going to be featuring the Break Evolutions from the Break Evolution box, which I mentioned last week in the news update. Now, I'd like to first start off by saying a special thank you to my friend Vibrant. I don't actually own this box myself, but she does, and she let me borrow her copies of the Break Evolutions, as you'll see here, the Bohem, for example, the Knocked Owl, and the Empoleon. Now, Vi is an aficionado of the TCG as well, and she is also into the video game, and she does a lot of shiny Pokemon hunting. So if you're interested in something like that, I'm going to include some links in the description. You can go follow her on Twitter and check out her uh, information and get some information about some shiny hunting from Vi. Now let's get into the deck here. So first off, we do have the Knocked Owl Break. The attack Night Scan for three colorless energy says your opponent reveals his or her hand. This attack does 30 more damage for each trainer card you find there. And a lot of competitive decks use trainer cards, so this Knocked Owl has a chance to do a lot of damage. It does 60 base damage. 30 more for each trainer. So I've got one of these in the deck. I'm going to include two Knocked Owl from the Breakthrough Expansion and two Hoot Hoot as well. So we're not going to focus too much on these particular Pokemon. I want to hold off on the Knocked Owl until I can match up with uh, my other friend who wants to use the Knocked Owl deck with High Flight. But if we do need to use it, we're going to make use of it. High Flight does 20 damage times. Each player reveals his or her hand, and the attack does 20 damage times the number of item cards revealed. And other than that, we have Speed Dive, which can do 70 damage for 3 colorless energy. Now, it's interesting the way the Hoot Hoot works with it. Proclaim the Knight doesn't do any damage, but your opponent can't play any item cards from his or her hand during his or her next turn. It's kind of neat where Hoot Hoot prevents them from playing items, then if you can evolve into Noctowl on the next turn, it's going to do additional damage based on the items that they were not able to play from hand. So we'll see if that works out. We've got, as I said, one Noctowl Break, two Noctowl, and two Hoot Hoot. Moving next to the Psychic Break Evolution, we have the Behem Break. Cosmic Circle for 3 Psychic Energy does 100 damage, and it says move as many Psychic Energy attached to your Pokémon to your other Pokémon in any way you like. So we're going to be able to make use of that, hopefully if we can get powered up. But I'm actually kind of interested in the Behem non-break attacks. Mind Bullet for a Psychic Energy says it does 20 damage to one of your opponent's Pokémon times the amount of energy attached to that Pokémon. And of course, don't apply Weakness and Resistance for Bench Pokémon. So I always think it's interesting attacks that can target anything on the field. And it's going to do additional damage the more energy they have. So if they're powering up something on the bench to get very strong, before it comes up to fight, you might be able to knock it out with a Mind Bullet. Side Beam for two Psychic Energy does 50 damage and causes confusion. No coin flip required. You can just confuse the opponent with that. So I've got two of the Behem in here. I've got two of the basic Elgium also from Breakthrough. That's going to round out the Psychic aspect of the deck. And the final break evolution is Empoleon Break. For a water and a colorless, Emperor's Command says this attack does 30 damage times the number of Pokemon your opponent has in play. So if they have a full bench of 5 plus 1 active, you're going to be doing 2, what is it, 180 actually. 30 times 6, yes, yeah, so 180 damage. So I've got one Empoleon Break, one regular Empoleon with an ability that's really not going to make a difference in this particular deck but certainly can make use of in perhaps a deck full of basic EX Pokemon. Each of your basic Pokemon's attacks does 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon, the uh, Dignified Fighter ability. So if you want to pair that with some strong basics, definitely going to be good. It's basically a muscle band for all of your basics in the form of an ability. And for a Water and Colorless, Hydro Splash does 70 damage. I've only got one Empoleon in the deck. I've got two Prinplup in the deck. Ice Beam for 30 damage has a chance to freeze on a coin flip of heads. I like how it looks like it's standing in the freezer aisle of the supermarket. It's kind of cool. <laughs> cool, I get it. So I got two Primplup and two Piplup. That's going to round out the Pokemon at 16 total. Scrolling down, we're going to check the energy out. For the most part, I've got basic. I've got six basic psychic energy, three basic water energy, and I've got a few special energy this week. 
Just because we do have some Psychic Pokemon in the deck, I'm going to throw in a couple of Mystery Energy, which provides Psychic Energy. You can only attach it to Psychic Pokemon, and it reduces the retreat cost of the Pokemon it's attached to by two colorless. So I've got two of these in the deck, and two double colorless. Now the only one we're really going to want to attach these to is the Knocked Owl, because none of the other Pokemon in the deck require two colorless to use any of their attacks. The Behem is all Psychic, the uh, Empoleon line needs only one colorless in addition to a Water. So the double colors are definitely going to go for the Knocked Owl. So that is 13 energy cards. The 31 trainer cards start with a couple of dive balls to help get the Empoleon out of the deck. Two escape ropes for maneuvering some Pokemon on the field. Two Evo Sodas to help evolve the Pokemon up. And I included the Paint Roller in last week's deck, and I'm going to include another one this week. Because it has the cool option of eliminating a Stadium card in play, and then you draw a card. So if the opponent has a Stadium that's benefiting their side, I can just wipe it out and draw an additional card, and hopefully it's something I can make use of. Two Professor's Letters to get some basic energy, and since we do have a Stage 2 Pokemon in this deck, I'm going to try the Rare Candy again. You get to play this, and if you have a basic Pokemon in play, and a Stage 2 that evolves up from that basic, you can play the Rare Candy to skip the Stage 1 stage. I'm going to go right from Piplup into Empoleon. Now since we only have one instance of that happening, I am only going to use one Rare Candy. And I've got one red card, the idea is, I want to be able to get my opponent to a decent hand of cards to power up the Knocked Owl Breaks Night Scan. So if they're only at one or two cards, perhaps, I might play a red card. It causes the opponent to shuffle their hand in and draw four cards. And if they have some trainers in that hand, suddenly Night Scan is going to do a lot more damage. Now, the reason I've got these target whistles in, you'll see the effect. It says, put a basic Pokemon from your opponent's discard pile onto his or her bench. The reason I have that is I want to power up Empoleon Breaks Attack. If they have some... Pokemon that are basic and have a high energy cost for attacks, I can use the target whistle to bring them back onto the bench. I'm going to power up Emperor's Command by 30 more damage, and hopefully not giving them something that they can suddenly add energy to and strike back at us. So it's a little bit risky, but we'll see how well it works out. The final item cards will be a couple of Versus Seekers, and as I always say, I like to run two Versus Seekers in addition to various different types of supporters because you're going to be able to use the Versus Seeker to bring back any supporter from your discard pile back into your hand. The supporters start with, we've got one Bridget this week. She's going to look for three basic Pokemon from my deck and put them right onto the bench. I've got a Giovanni Skeen. I like this one because you have the option to either draw until you have five cards in hand, or during this turn, your, your Pokemon's attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. I really like the versatility. You have an option with what you want to do. Now, since we do not have any Pokemon with abilities that are going to affect our side this week, we do have Hex Maniac. Until the end of your opponent's next turn, each Pokemon in play, in each player's hand, and in each player's discard pile has no abilities. This is including Pokemon that come into play that turn. So, if the opponent does have some abilities helping their side, we can simply shut them down with the Hex Maniac and completely negate those abilities, giving us probably a fair shot at doing something. Now, we want to include a couple of Judge this week. The opponent, again, if they have like a small amount of cards in hand, I can play Judge, hopefully getting them up to a decent amount of trainer cards in hand, so the Knocked Owl Break can do additional damage. Two Judges are in the deck. I've got one Lysandre. I always say you got to have at least one of these cards in your deck. Not necessarily the full art, but if you have one, go for it. You get to maneuver your opponent's Pokemon around however you like. A Pokemon Center Lady to heal up my own Pokemon. And a few more trainers here, or supporters. We have Professor Birch's Observations, good for draw support. Skyla is good to help you find any trainer card from your deck and take it into hand. Wally, of course, is helpful to get your evolutions into play. And Zero Sick, I always like to put one of these in the deck as well. You get to discard any Pokemon tool or special energy card in play. Now, more often than not, I'm going to use that to get rid of any tools that are attached to my opponent's Pokemon EX. Because you'll see I do have the Team Flare Hyper Gear later on. Now, I am going to include the Parallel City. What I want to do when I play this, I want to angle it so that the blue side is facing me. What that does is, the player on the blue side of Parallel City can only have three bench Pokémon. And since we only have three break evolutions, I'm really only going to focus on getting three, maybe four Pokémon so that there can be one to take a hit. That's all I'm going to really try to get into play. It's going to help me by affecting the opponent with the red side, which says any damage done by attacks from this player's Grass, Fire, or Water Pokémon is reduced by 20. So we're going to minimize any damage from those types against us. Now, the three tools for our side, we have one Lucky Helmet. If I throw it on my active Pokémon, every time they take damage from an attack, I get to draw two additional cards. 
and I've got a muscle band to power up whichever attack I happen to be going for at the time. And wide lens is something that I've wanted to use for a while, but I haven't really had any decks that focus on attacks to the bench. So if I can get this wide lens attached to Behem, I'm definitely going to hopefully make use of it. What it does is, if the opponent's bench Pokemon has a weakness or resistance to, for example, Psychic, in the case of Behem, you do apply that weakness or resistance. So if they do have something like, let's say, for example, a Mewtwo EX powering up on the bench, I'm going to be able to use the Mind Bullet, and it's going to be doubled because of Mewtwo EX's weakness to Psychic. So we're going to see if we can pull that off. The only other tool is going to be the Head Ringer. The reason I'm choosing this over the Jamming Net is because this card requires the Pokemon that this card is attached to to have one colorless more energy to use their attacks. That means they're going to want to power up a little bit more, which then means we're going to have more damage from the Mind Bullet from Behem. So that is the deck for this week. 16 Pokemon, 31 Trainers, and 13 Energy. Let's get into some matches right now and see how well we do this week in the online battles. Alright, we're up against Xion1234 with a Grass, Lightning, Dragon, and Colorless deck. So we get the coin flip of the Metagross coin, we choose Heads, we get Tails. So they get to choose who goes first, and they're going to choose themselves. Which means we will get to attack on our first turn, using our only basic. And the opponent had no basics, okay. So let's take a look at their hand in a moment. LGM goes down, and it looks like they have a Quilladin. So this could be a possible Chestnut Break deck, with some Lightning Energy in there as well. I wonder what that's going to apply to. First of all, I didn't even mention the awesome Pyroarth sleeve that they have for their cards. Yeah, we'll take another card for the mulligan. And Verizian is in. Okay. So, prize count. I can't even take a look. Oh, my computer's lagging a little bit. Just bear with me, folks. Alright, so we see... Prize count... We'll do 40. Okay, so I'm going to attach energy to the LGM, and I don't know if I want to play the Professor's Letter yet. I could... No, I'm going to, actually. I was thinking of using Judge, but I'm too set up to get some decent play with uh, Behem and Behem Break as things are. So, this is the way to go. We are going to Psych up for 10 damage, and as long as they don't get a Muscle Band, we will survive this turn and be able to get Behem in play. So right now all they can do is 40, which is okay. And Polion Break is in hand. So first off, I'm going to Behem. I'm going to play Behem, I mean to say. I'll attach another Psychic so we can use the side beam. We will survive another prize count attack. And I'm going to hold off on playing Judge so I can use the Evo Soda. Okay, side beam for 50 and confuse this Verizian. I can use the Evo Soda next turn to get Behem break and play. And if my opponent cannot get any other basic Pokemon on the bench, we're actually going to win this one. Although, not just yet. Pokemon Center Lady will heal 60 and the special conditions. And 40 more damage. We're 10 HP away from fainting. Double colorless. That's not going to help us. We're going to Evo Soda into Behem Break. And then we're going to play the Professor's Letter. We only need to get one out of the deck, but we're going to grab two anyway just because we have that option. So we are still 50 HP strong. I'm going to judge right now. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I like how it gives you the option not to, though. So, we did get another basic. Definitely what I was hoping for. Now, they too might have gotten a basic from that, though. So, first things first, we're actually going to stick with the side beam for now to cause confusion. Next turn, we can use the Cosmic Circle and get the knockout. And if they have no other basics, we've won the match. There's a basic. Okay, so a double colorless has been added. How much HP do you have? 110. So, they heal again. Okay. So we are still 10 HP remaining. A Hoot Hoot has been found. They've got to be out of Pokemon Center ladies by now. 
What can you do to us? Push down can do a measly 20. I'm wondering if I should bring this up. Whichever one I hit, though, I'm thinking it brings something up to Confuse, but whichever one I hit, they can just retreat. In fact, I'd rather bring this up and make them lose a double colorless if they do plan to retreat. So I'm going to go with the Ma... Um, hmm. I could Cosmic Circle the energy onto the Hoot Hoot. Might be a way to go. No, I'm going to Confuse. Side Beam! 50 damage. And Confuse that thing. Now, like I said, they can just retreat, but they're going to lose a double colorless by doing so, unless they have another basic energy that they can now attach. But they're going to knock themselves out. Wait. Oh, I, I completely miscounted, so I was counting as if I did Cosmic Circle. So, fortunately, we get our own Pokemon Center Lady. I'm definitely going to make use of that right now. And... I'm trying to think. I could use the Mind Bullet on this, but it's only going to do 40. However, I'm going to do that because if I attack the Tornadoes and knock it out, suddenly prize count of Verizian gets much stronger. So we're going to mind bullet the Verizian on the bench and allow this Tornadoes to possibly knock itself out. Twist their throat can do 120, but only if they have the same number of cards in their hand as I have. If they play one more card, they can knock out Bahia and break. Assuming they get the coin flip of heads for their own confusion. Alright, now they can do the Russian, sorry, the Bustin with Dragonite. Or just knock themselves out, which I'm okay with. Alright, we gain the prize. Now, of course, as I say, Verizon is suddenly a lot more powerful. Thanks for bringing that up so I can knock it out. Alright, Judge. Do I want to play Judge? I do want to get some better cards in hand. It's going to give them some cards as well. But I need the help. Okay, Knocked Owl Break. Can't make use of that just yet. We're just going to go with the Cosmic Circle and knock out this very dangerous Verizian. And I'm not going to move any energy. We're going to keep it all on Behemoth Break. We are safe for at least three turns so that Dragonite can't attack us just yet. And we actually just got a Headbringer which I think I'm going to slap down next turn on that Dragonite EX. Professor's Letter. They're going to find two basic energy, and put them right into hand, and start powering up that Dragonite. So, slow going for the time being. We're going to Headringer it. It's going to require one more colorless energy to be able to use its attacks. Let's put a Wide Lens on Behemoth. We're going to put a Mystery Energy on it as well. I'm simply playing out some cards so I can play Giovanni Scheme and draw until I have five in hand. So three more cards coming up. I was hoping for a Knocked Owl, but we'll do with uh, Piplup. And we can do a powerful Cosmic Circle for 100. One more of those will take down the Dragonite. And we'll keep the energy where it is. I probably could have moved one of those basic Psychic Energy away, though. they have no basics, we won this match. Another Cosmic Circle is all it's going to take to finish off the Dragonite EX. And they probably know that. They're taking their time to decide what to do. Okay, there is another basic. I'm kind of glad because I didn't want this match to end just yet. Things are getting pretty interesting. And I'm only just now starting to get set up. Alright, so definitely this is the probably the bigger threat. Let's put a mystery energy onto the Heum Break, because I'm going to start moving some energy around. Piplup will drop you right here. Now I'm going to shuffle away using Professor Birch and draw four cards. Now we can Evo Soda into Knocked Owl. Because we do have Knocked Owl Break in hand. So if I Mind Bullet now, this thing can come up. Actually, yeah, okay, because of the tool, the... One second here. The Manectra can take us out with the Assault Laser. So given that, I think the best idea, we're going to start doing some Mind Bullet damage. Or win the game, even though we didn't get to use all of the Break Evolutions. 
This was still a victory. We were going to start doing damage to the Manectric EX. We could have got the knockout on the Dragonite at any point, but we'll never know how that would have went because the opponent win or w ends it right there. Victory for us. Good game. We are up against Sky Knight Pro. So we have a Lightning, Dragon, Grass, and Colorless deck. I'm thinking we might see a Dragonite. Look at this Hoopa coin. That's one super Hoopa coin. So they chose heads and got the heads, and that's quite the heads they got too. So they get to choose who goes first, and they give us the first turn actually. So we can get ourselves set up a little more quickly. Well, not without a basic, but they don't have a basic either. So they have the Magneton, it's going to evolve into the Magnezone that allows attachment of as much lightning energy per turn as they want. That's what i got to watch out for. So we do have a Hoot Hoot this time around. And they got the fancy card sleeves, look at that, glowing Pokeball. Alright, so Hoot Hoot goes to the active spot. We can proclaim the night on our second turn when we attach the energies. Alright, and let's see what they start with. A Pikachu EX. I've heard of this. It's in one of the box sets. Overspark. Discard all lightning energy attached to this Pokemon. This does 50 damage times the amount, the number of energy you discarded. That is crazy. And it's a Pikachu. How often do you see a non-fully evolved Pokemon? Okay, I'm getting way too uh, wrapped up in this. Attach that. Well, you know what? Pikachu can one-shot us. I don't like that. One energy, Pikachu can destroy us. Let's end the turn. See what happens next. Unless they flip a Tails with that Iron Tail. That's our only, only hope. Well, good game. The Sky Knight is a pro. So that's going to wrap up this week's Pokemon TCG Live Online match. It's unfortunate I couldn't really show off the full power of each of the Break Evolutions, but hopefully you enjoyed seeing what they could do, the ones that I was able to get into play. Now, I actually recorded about a dozen different matches using this deck, and these are the best ones that I have to show you, the ones that kind of feature the majority of the strategy that I was going for. So that does wrap up this week's video. I want to say once again, special thanks to my friend Vi Brandt for loaning me the use of these promo Break Evolutions. I'm going to be trading them back right to her so she can have fun playing around with them in the online matches herself. So check out the links in the description going to her information. As I said, she is a shiny Pokemon hunter and breeder, I forgot to mention before, in the video games. So if you're interested in shiny Pokemon, definitely go check out the information she has to share. So next week, what I'm hoping to do, as I said in yesterday's news update, is show you some footage of the Breakpoint pre-release that I'm going to attend this coming weekend. Hopefully I can show you some matches and some pack openings of that. And if so, we're going to see some pretty awesome new cards that are not going to be released for sale for another couple of weeks. So with that, we're going to end off this video. I want to say thank you for checking out this week's Pokemon TCG Live Online match, and I'll catch you next time.